Hey Cruisers, it's Sherry with Cruise Tips TV. Today we're going to take a look at Royal Caribbean's Liberty of the Seas. If you're using a computer to view this video, you can use this menu to jump to specific decks. We'll also list direct links to specific areas in the description below. This is the absolutely gorgeous main dining room. It has three levels, each with its own name. Rembrandt is on deck three, Michelangelo on four, and Botticelli on deck five. Botticelli hosts the flexible My Time Dining, while Michelangelo and Rembrandt are for traditional diners. We just love the classical style of this place and the food and service were outstanding. This unique bright red couch marks the spot for the art gallery. There's original art displayed here as well as throughout the ship. There's an onboard art auction for those interested in purchasing items. Just past the art gallery on deck three is the On Air Club. Seafaring sports fanatics will want to circle this spot on their deck plans. This sports bar is equipped with the requisite flat screen TVs and friendly bar service. It also doubles as an adult karaoke bar. Looking for the ice rink? Here's a hint, it's in Studio B. Studio B is a multi-purpose studio complex that we are told is home to many activities all day long, including ice skating. On our many visits, Studio B was closed more often than not. You'll definitely want to consult your cruise compass for specific information about hours of operation. This is the Platinum Theater. It's five stories from the orchestra pit to the ceiling, and it's all about shipboard entertainment. From singers and dancers to magicians, comedians, and acrobats. The seats are comfortable and most offer great views of the performers. The performances we saw were absolutely mesmerizing. Bolero's Lounge is the place to be if you're looking for a Latin beat. Bookended by these interesting sculptures, Bolero's serves up live music and cool drinks. Casino Royale is Liberty of the Seas, Vegas. Complete with its own bar, traditional tables, slots, and Vegas-inspired art, Casino Royale is chocked with gaming goodness. Occupying portions of Deck 3 and 4, the Catacombs is a gothic-inspired disco. You can look down from Deck 4 and see the dance floor on Deck 3. There are bars on both levels and each is easily accessed by these unique stairs. There's lots of space to hang out before heading to the adequately sized dance floor. This place is cool.
This nautically themed bar is a popular hangout, likely due to nightly piano entertainment. But even if the ivory maestros are on break, Schooner Bar is the perfect place to settle in with some friends and a drink. Bright, open, and elegant, the Champagne Bar seems to fit its namesake perfectly. There's lots of comfy seating here, and if you're in the mood for a little champagne and some people watching, this is the place for you. Just across from the Champagne Bar are two extremely popular and important places on the ship. Explorations and Guest Relations. The Explorations Desk is Liberty of the Sea's Shore Excursion Desk, while the Guest Services Desk is your one-stop ship information source. The Royal Promenade is really the heart of the ship. We're told it's designed to resemble famous American entertainment streets, like New Orleans Bourbon Street or Memphis's Beale Street. Look up and you'll see the Promenade View staterooms with a 24-7 view of the action. This four-story mall lover's dream is lined with shops and bars, from coffee shops to cupcakes, ice cream, clothing, and more. The parades are also held here and offer a great vantage point for the entertainment, no matter where you happen to be on the promenade. Of course, there's the requisite jewelry store, and bars with cars. If you stop and look around, it's quite fantastic here, and the energy can't be beat. There's even a pizzeria. The list just goes on. The Royal Promenade is the place to be in the evenings, when guests stroll through, meet up with friends, and enjoy one of the many spots to stop for a snack, a drink, or a sweet treat. We didn't spend a lot of time at the Connoisseur Club, the adults only smoking room, but it was nice to know if I ever got a hankering for a good stogie, there was this nice comfy place to go. With statues of pharaohs and murals of the Nile, there's no mistaking the Sphinx Lounge ancient Egyptian motif. The big roomy area is said to feature live music, dancing, and other entertainment. We didn't notice a lot going on here during our stay, but put a little live music on stage and this would be a perfect place to get your groove on. Hey look, business services, printers and stuff. Ugh, but yeah, it's here if you need it. Next up, the library. This place looks seriously comfy, but is it just us or does there seem to be a lot of empty space in these bookshelves? This is Royal Caribbean Online, the internet cafe. Yay, it's high tech on the high seas. Where was that pool again? We like to disconnect when we cruise, but okay, this place looks cool. This is the entrance to Foodie Paradise on Deck 11. The Plaza Bar is a convenient place to hang out for a drink before heading to Chops, Portofino, or the Buffet. And this is Chops, Royal Caribbean's popular signature steakhouse, featuring mouth-watering grade-A premium cuts of steak and other delectable dishes. We love this place. The food and service were outstanding. 
The dark wood and earth tones give it a comfortable, intimate feel. If you arrive at the right time, the floor to ceiling windows offer stunning panoramic views. Portofino serves upscale Italian cuisine in an intimate atmosphere. Directly across from Chops, Portofino is bright with yellow and red tones. Sporting the same floor to ceiling windows, Portofino offers a luxurious dining experience and, with proper timing, breathtaking views. On our way to the buffet, we'll get a quick look at Jade, the Asian-themed buffet area. And finally, let's take a look at the Windjammer Buffet. Compared to some buffets at sea, there is quite a bit of comfortable seating, including some cozy booths. We never found ourselves walking around with a plate of food looking for a seat as we have on so many other lines. In the evenings, the cafe's casual atmosphere is complemented by a changing menu and restaurant-style service. The food station layout seems to work quite well here, too. There were definitely lines at times, but for the most part, everything seems quite accessible. The food was on par with what one might expect from a buffet. Venturing further out on deck 11, we find a diver's favorite, the Sea Track Emporium. How cool is this? A scuba shop at sea. Next, we find Squeeze, with its fun yellow bar stools and accents. This juice bar invites all within view to come quench your thirst with a cool and refreshing fruit drink. This is the appropriately named H2O Zone. Amongst the colorful sculptures here is a series of sprinklers, jets, and water cannons that the little ones are going to find absolutely irresistible. Complete with shallow wading water and whirlpools, this is the place the kids get their crazy on. This is the sports pool. It's got your big screen and your big time lap pools. Throw in a couple of hot tubs and a pool bar and we're set. And there they are. The adults only solarium pool area is where you'll find the extra comfy pool furniture. Of course, the real attraction in the solarium are the cantilevered whirlpools that extend 12 feet beyond the sides of the ship. Here's a quick look at the solarium bar before we take a look at the pool. This area was designed to be a serene sanctuary. And again, check out the premium lounge chairs. Here we are at the fitness center. This place is the real deal. It has just about everything, including modern equipment and a great selection of free weights. And just look at all the space. No crowding here. Tons of treadmills, bikes, and yes, that is a boxing ring. And here's a separate group fitness room. And the setup for a spin class. Like I said, it's the real deal. This is Fuel, the teen disco. If you've got teens, they'll probably end up spending most of their time on deck 12. Liberty of the Seas is very teen friendly. 
with fuel, the living room, and the video arcade right next to each other, they'll have plenty of places to hang out and complain about having nothing to do. You have to stop by Johnny Rockets, the 50s diner, at least once while on board. Okay, so it may or may not be the best burger you'll have at sea, but come on, this place is just cool. For Micah counters, a jukebox, and malted milkshakes. It's tough to beat that. Looking for activities for the little ones? Then swing by Adventure Ocean, the play area specially designed for kids. They are super friendly here, and the kids really seem to enjoy the activities. Now, let's check out the arcade. Okay, flashing lights, check. Bonks, beeps, and buzzes, check. Skee-ball, my personal favorite, check. Impossible claw game and air hockey, check. Roaring engines and distant machine gun fire, check. Okay, this place checks out. Games are paid for with cruise cards, and redeemable points are likewise recorded. We were a little disappointed in the quality of the prizes, but not overly surprised. This is the living room, another popular teen hangout. It's got plenty of space, seating, and big screen TVs seems authentic and extremely popular at night. You can take in the view while running laps on the jogging track on deck 12, or you could just use it as a path to your mojito at the sky bar, or better yet, a path to the Vitality at Sea Spa. This full-service spa offers a beauty salon and spa treatments, including massage, manicures, and seaweed body wraps. The Flow Rider is one of the main attractions on Deck 13. We've tried the Flow Rider enough times to know it takes a bit of perseverance and we were impressed with the concern and patience the staff showed for the guests. More of a mini golf type? Then Liberty Dunes is the place for you. There's nine holes of miniature golf fun here to test your skills. Interested in some hoops or volleyball? Here's your spot. We never saw anyone playing volleyball, but it was usually teeming with b-ballers. Here is the popular rock climbing wall, towering over the sports court. Since this is a very popular feature on the ship and climbing hours are limited, we recommend scheduling your climb as soon as possible. The Seven Hearts card room is a nice place to meet for games and friendly conversation. Right next to Seven Hearts is Cloud Nine, an intimate, comfortable lounge that can be rented out for little parties. Looks like some little ones booked it today. This is Olive or Twist. It has unbelievable panoramic views over the ship's pool areas as well as over the sea. In the evenings, it has live or late night DJ music. this place is not to be missed. There's plenty of space here and no shortage of comfortable seating. 
grab a drink from the friendly staff, kick back, and watch it go by. The last stop is the Heavenly Skylight Wedding Chapel. This lovely little chapel can accommodate 40 people and in our opinion would be a perfect place to get married. Perhaps it's the natural light or the fact that it's at the highest point on the ship, but it really does have a heavenly feel to it. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Psst, don't forget to subscribe. Click me or use the links below.